This case should never have come to trial. I don't think it's fair to call my clients frauds. Because one time I turned into a dog and they helped me. Thank you. Your Honor, we would like to withdraw our plea of not guilty and enter a plea of guilty. This trial is a travesty. It's a travesty of a mockery, of a sham, of a mockery, of a travesty, of two mockeries, of a sham. If we are to have faith in justice, we need only to believe in ourselves. And the truth shall set you free! How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Oh, guilty, but with a real good excuse. Well, I think the truth will come forth. You can't handle the truth! Hello, everybody. It's time for more Law Light. Brought to you by Foreman Watson Holtry, FWHlegal.com. Coming to you, one of us today, from the high-rise White Tower, PJ holding down the, the home place. How are you, PJ? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm on the road today, yes. so I am not in the high-rise White Tower. I am on the road to Bowling Green, Kentucky, so I am just now uh, getting on the Natcher Parkway. So you're going for a deposition, or you're going just to kind of spend some time in the Bowling Green office, or both? So today, um, there are three things on my agenda in Bowling Green. Number one is to take my daughter and son to lunch, who are both students at Western. Number two is to have a meeting with the new marketing folks that we've uh, joined up with down there. And number three, spend some time acquainting myself to the new office digs. Uh, They got all of the uh, computers and everything in there, but I have not yet sat down in my office to uh, give it a spin and a whirl. So I I brought some work with me to to do there at the Bowling Green office. Well, I've seen pictures of the office and it looks really nice. Yeah, so the office in Bowling Green has some beautiful conference rooms, but conference rooms are all equipped with state-of-the-art video conferencing uh, equipment. Rather than having to do things via Zoom, you can record Uh, a video conference as if you're just sitting there in person. The screens and the monitors in there are all high resolution. The equipment is, uh, it's been equipped by Logitech, which is, you know, top of the line when it comes to video conferencing and video equipment. So anyhow, we are, we're excited about the uh, opportunities that await us in Bowling Green. So I'm looking forward to eventually getting down there. I'm assuming I'm going to be doing some uh, client interviews at some point. Oh, yeah, you will be because we are, uh, you know, we're cultivating a lot of relationships in the Bowling Green area and in the counties that surround Warren County to generate, you know, uh, all kinds of cases. But, of course, that would involve our focal cases, which are the the personal injury cases. Right. You'll have to get down there. Actually, I would like to do kind of an office opening type party and have, you know, some people down and we're going to look at maybe doing that this fall and maybe center it around a a western football game or something we're kind of kicking those ideas around right listen one thing that was cool that i wanted to share with you along the lines of what we talked about in our last episode where we were talking about people who had been influential in our life and led you know left a mark with us as we were discussing your grandmother who has recently who recently passed away i was putting my uh my bag and stuff in the car here a few minutes ago as I was leaving the office to head to Bowling Green, I heard someone say, Hey, coach Travis. And I I kind of yelled my, you know, coach Travis. So I turned around and I saw that it was a guy named DeQuelis Hayden, who I used to call DQ. And I coached (laughs) uh, him in basketball for four years in a league here in Owen. Well, Back, I'm not in Owensboro right now, but in Owensboro. And he stopped. He stopped his car, got out, gave, came over, gave me like a, a handshake hug type thing. <laughs> and he said, you know, he goes, it's good to see you. And he thanked me for coaching him. And he said he thinks about that all the time. And a lot of the stuff that I taught him, you know, that made my day. A lot of times we get too busy doing our work and we forget that we have an opportunity to leave a legacy of our own with people. You know how your grandmother invested hours and hours of time in your life, right? which was influential. 
you know, we have that opportunity every day to do the very same thing with our own kids, eventually with our own grandkids, but also just as important to people that don't have some of those uh, family figures in their lives, you can be that for them. So it's a good reminder and it's something that I wanted to share with you. That's really awesome. I mean, that's got to be a rewarding feeling. It is. I spent six years coaching basketball and, um, and kind of like a, it was a, for guys that didn't play on high school teams, but loved to play basketball and we put together some really good teams took those kids and played in tournaments and played church teams and things like that and it, it was a, it was a lot of fun and i got to meet a lot of great guys that that needed somebody in their life one thing that i've noticed when i go to like connor's school is it's it's and and it's not this way entirely across the board for every student but i noticed a big majority and even well, even for Logan, um, whenever we go to his his like uh, like re- the, to meet the teachers, his, you know, his teachers would make comments like, "We well, are the first parents that we've had at the uh, meet the meet the teacher meetings in like five years," which is uh, extremely sad, but also very eye opening. I, d- I don't understand parents who aren't active at least to some degree in their children's life, especially when it comes to really important things such as their education. But uh, um, I've noticed the same thing with like Connor's school. Whenever we go, there's always very few parents there to like watch their kids. But so we've kind of taken it upon ourselves to try to be those. We don't try to replace the parents, but we try to say, you know, like Logan's best friend, you know, I won't go into all the details, but you know, he, he's had kind of a tough life when it comes to having some kind of a mentor figure in his life or, or a, a, a grown up that he can go to to really talk about things. So, um, you know, we, we, tr- we have those types of conversations with him every now and then we kind of let him know that anytime he needs someone to talk to or if there's an adult that he can come to us to be that person so I now I've never coached anybody I'd probably I'd probably be the worst coach considering I don't know, know anything about sports but like you just pointed out I mean it's just recognizing different need I mean even when you go into a school and you have that opportunity that's exactly what I'm talking about is taking time to invest in people that aren't just your family because some people you know some people don't have gigi their grandmother to be that person for them you know some people right. don't have that dad that will uh invest hours of teaching you to play a, a sport or to pursue an art form that you're interested in you know and you know and i'm guilty of getting caught up in you know and, and, and we do have a huge responsibility taking care of our own and to bring up our own kids so that we are influential in their life and that when they look back they say hey my mom and my dad they were the people most influential in my life we all are given opportunities to be that for someone else that doesn't have those people and so we got to continue to look and look for opportunities and i for one tip my hat you have been so say dedicated and made it a, a priority that when given the opportunity to get into the schools to talk to kids about your profession and your passions and and to take that time you've done it and i know holly has done that on a number of occasions over in the ohio county elementary and middle schools and high school um you know i know tyler has gone back a couple times to to owensboro high where you guys graduated from right those moments with kids are are so important you know, to, uh, and you never know who you're going to touch, you know? Yeah. I'm a, I'm, I love kids. I've always, Trina would say it's because I'm basically a kid. So that's why I get along with them so well, because I'm, I'm pretty much at their maturity level. I can remember, you know, when I was in school, there were times where an adult would come in or someone would come in and kind of like you said, talk about their profession or talk about something that they could do. Even if it was something that I wasn't really interested in, I've always been someone who is just fascinated by uh, stories and people's lives and, and how things work and that kind of a thing. So I always appreciated when someone would come in to spend that time to kind of talk about what they've gone through and what the future could look like if you're interested in that profession or at least if you're not, you know, whatever it is that you want to do or anything that you're passionate about, if you put all of yourself into it 
and, you know, try to make the right decisions, then more than likely there's a good chance you'll be successful at it. Funny enough, though, and, you know, you've gone through the same thing, but as a parent, your kids are more appreciative sometimes of the other people (laughs) or other adults versus their own parents. Because I know, like, right now, Logan tends to see me as the enemy versus as, uh, you know, as someone who's on his side and trying to help him. But I went through that same phase with my mom and my stepdad, and we have a much better relationship now. So I think sometimes it's just kind of uh, the dynamic. Funny you mentioned that because um, it was either yesterday or the day before I had seen something on social media. I laughed at and I talked to Missy about it. It said it said something along the lines. I'll probably slaughter this, but it said something <laughs> along the lines of uh, it was like coming from a kid. And it said, yeah, dad, I, I know that you've told me this all along, but I only chose to listen to the to it when you paid someone to tell me and (laughs) there was a lot of truth in that coming from a i I had i've had uh, my daughter kate was a uh uh, played fast pitch softball you know up into high school and was pretty good at at the sport i had played a lot of baseball and and i felt like i could coach her and teach her pretty much what she needed to know to succeed but coming from dad, she didn't want to listen to it. But I would pay hitting instructors and other college athletes to work with Kate and to, you know, to, to teach her drills and things. And they were teaching her the same things I would tell her. And she would, you know, she would like, oh, that's great. You know, and she, it would like <laughs> she would absorb it coming from these girls who she was looking up to as softball players instead of it coming from dad. Right. So I'm with you. You know, some they don't think you know what you're talking about. It's not cool coming from you, but they'll listen to it if it comes from someone else. You know, and it's funny how being a parent, there's so many things that when you're a teenager that they tell you, like, you know, you won't understand until you're a parent yourself. And, of right. course, you're like, whatever. And uh, you don't really take it to heart, but literally, um, you know, there's things my parents said when they were angry or just uh, something as simple as, you know, why can't I do this? Well, because I said so. I always hated that. And I, and I said, I would never be the parent that says, because I said so, but sometimes it's because you said so. And I didn't realize that that's just how it is uh, until I became a parent myself. So there's a lot of things that, you know, I'm, I know Logan and them don't appreciate, uh, you know, like Logan wants to be a uh, prof- or he wants to be a famous YouTuber. And I try to explain to him that, that you can be a famous YouTuber, but you have to have some kind of a fallback. Don't expect that you're, everything's <laughs> going to fall in place and you're just going to suddenly become this famous YouTuber. And he, and he, He'll argue against it and go, no, it's just, it's that simple, blah, blah, blah. Then he'll watch a video with one of his favorite YouTubers and they'll open up and talk about how difficult uh, things were and how they worked at the McDonald's drive through and never thought that they would become a famous YouTuber and they were going, or they were going to college and trying to do this. And then suddenly things really took off with the YouTube. But in order to get there, they, there was a lot of hard work that you never, you didn't see them do. And a lot of life that had to be lived that you didn't see outside the YouTube videos. And he's sitting there listening to him going, Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm thinking, I literally just told you that. One thing you may want to do with that is I look up, you know, I can't remember. I, I heard something on talk radio, it's been a month or two, but I heard people were guessing how long something's been around and and YouTube was one of the things and I can't remember you could probably google it and find out how long we've had YouTube but a good point to make to him would be you know let's say YouTube's 12 years old okay I don't know I think it's older than that actually <laughs> Logan, you know when I was when I was your age there was no such thing as YouTube so by the time you're my age, there probably won't be anything such as YouTube, and it'll be something else that's making all the money. And if you put all of your eggs in the YouTube basket, you're going to be left behind. There, there was no such thing. That, that, that stuff changes. It's so fluid. The ones that make money at doing that are its almost the same odds as becoming a professional athlete, you know? Right. And it's like less than... One percent of the kids that play baseball ever make it to the majors, you know. But they have to learn those lessons themselves. They just have to. I agree. Well, listen, we're, we, I, I had no idea we were going to get off. You know, you know, we should, uh, we should offer uh, 
our services as parental counselors from some of our observations <laughs> that we're learning with our kids and have learned. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to talk today. I, I, we've been working on the website some about and some of our areas of practice, PJ. And right. one thing that I don't think we've done a great job of, you know, we've introduced Bart Daryl and talked about how excited we are to get Bart with us um, in the law firm. But there's two things that Bart is focusing his practice on that I wanted to touch on for our, our listeners and those people that follow the podcast so that, you know, again, we, we put this entire thing together to educate people and to make ourselves more accessible and transparent. Right. But there's there's two things. And, and, and as you know, you work on the website. It's not on there yet, but it's going to be. We're, we're working on getting it put up. But Bart does a, a, a great number of mediations. And I don't know which episode it was. Maybe back, I think it was one of the first maybe five, ten episodes. I spent an entire episode talking about what mediation is. Yeah. And you had some great questions like, you know, you, we, we were able to go through it and kind of lay out how a mediation works, why, who you get as a mediator. And all too often, attorneys, you know, we get in these ruts where we say, you know, the same two or three mediators. Well, let's. I've had good luck with this one. Let's use him, you know. And they don't think about getting the best mediator for the case. Right. Um, in other words, your case may have a wrinkle in it or a, a, a set of facts that, that make it to where while a, a seasoned mediator may be able to do a good job, there may be a mediator out there that has more of that in their background. I'll give you an example. Five years ago, you know, it's been longer than that, about seven years ago, I was litigating a case where I represented a uh, contractor who had done uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of work on a project and had not gotten paid. And so he pulled off of the job, filed a mechanics lien, materialman's lien, and was pursuing in litigation the recovery of that money. Okay. Right. We litigated that case, took depositions, exchanged a lot of what I would call accounting records, uh, purchase, uh, purchase receipts and things like that. And it came time to try to mediate the case. The court required us, as you remember, as a lot of courts mandate that you have to mediate before you get a trial date. We went to mediation and we, we were picking the mediator in that case. The other attorney was like, well, I've always had good luck with and he named two or three mediators. And none of those guys that I knew of had any experience in construction law. OK, and this dealt with a, a very large remodeling project of what I would call to be a luxury home. And so I was like, you know, yeah, they may be good mediators, but are they the best mediator for this case? And so I set out to find mediators who had experience representing contractors and, and people who built homes or remodeled homes and then worked backwards from there, got a couple names and then floated those names to the other attorney and said, hey, you know, why don't we consider this guy? Because he's got experience in this very type of law. That's why I'm really happy that we have Bart because Bart is about 60 percent of his legal practice is acting as a mediator for people. And Bart has mediated all kinds of cases, but here we have in our office a mediator who has the experience of having tried over 120 civil trials of all different kinds right. to juries and to judges all across the Commonwealth. But in addition to that, he has 20 plus years experience in representing school boards and focusing on education law, and then as we have noted, five years of experience in higher education as the president of a liberal arts college. The guy brings so much to the table as a mediator. We want people to have him accessible for mediating cases with that extensive of a background. And what's great, you've talked to Bart. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's very down-to-earth, and, I mean, he's he's a fun guy. He's real laid back, and he's just, yeah, I mean, he's really knowledgeable. He's like talking to a friend. As soon, I mean, you know, he's one of those people that just right away, immediately, when you talk to him, it's like talking to somebody that you've known for a really long time. That That is conducive to good mediation. People feel comfortable with him. Right. So people will tell him, 
the strengths and the weaknesses and their concerns about their case. And the other side will do the same thing. And Bart can take that. And he's very intelligent. And so he takes his personality that endears you to him and establishes trust. And then he uses his knowledge and his experience to help people realize what this, the realistic scenarios are in their case, which helps you bring about settlement. I want to point out, if anybody that's listening to this is an attorney and needs a mediator, Bart is there and is taking on more and more mediation work. But if people aren't attorneys and they're listening to the podcast, it's important to understand that if they are represented by someone or us and we start to talk about mediation, we're going to look for mediators like Bart. You know, we're going to look for qualified mediators, yeah. you know. So Bart's uh, experience in education law is something that we're definitely going to he, – he, he works in that area of the law, and there's going to be more and more education issues as we deal with COVID and this pandemic because – absolutely. Uh, you know, and Bart's knowledge of running, uh, you know, of school boards and education and the laws that, I mean, and there are a plethora, I mean, there are federal laws, state laws, all that are unique to education with that kind of experience. So, you know, we I was talking to Bart yesterday and I like, you know, you can represent individuals, you can represent private schools, you can represent public schools, you can represent colleges and universities. So that diverse work that he's done in the field of education law is invaluable. FWH is moving in some directions that a lot of law firms aren't moving. And we offer mediation services. We now have education law. And those things are important, just as important as what we do and focus on our personal injury work. What we need to do now, we are on episode 50. We have two weeks Five, oh, to prepare yeah. for our special one year anniversary okay so let's put our heads together on how we want that to go okay we need the 52nd episode our one year spiel needs to be a little bit different so that we are you know we make a big day of that we can serve say we have survived and paved the roads for a year of of, of uh podcasting i know which is incredible to think that it's been almost a year since we started this so let's do something special for the 52nd, and then, as I've alluded to, we are going to start getting uh, our calendar filled up for for 2021 with guests. Okay? Sounds good. All right. Well, it's been uh, Law Light on the Road today, uh, <laughs> brought to you by Foreman Watson Holtry, FWHlegal.com. Uh, if you have any legal needs, look us up, give us a call. We'll be happy to help you. Until next time, it's Travis and PJ. This case should never have come to trial. I don't think it's fair to call my clients frauds. Because one time I turned into a dog and they helped me. Thank you. Your Honor, we would like to withdraw our plea of not guilty and enter a plea of guilty. This trial is a travesty. It's a travesty of a mockery, of a sham, of a mockery, of a travesty, of two mockeries, of a sham. If we are to have faith in justice, we need only to believe in ourselves. And the truth shall set you free! How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Oh, guilty, but with a real good excuse. Well, I think the truth will come forth. You can't handle the truth!